Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> um, my name is Shireen. I'm going to be talking about how to eat to save the world. Um, I'm going to start with a quote from one of my favorite books. In 1986, mad cow disease struck the British Isles, and more than two million cows suspected of harboring contagious dementia faced capital punishment. In 1997, avian flu from Hong Kong sowed panic and condemned a million and a half birds to premature death. In the year 2009, Mexico and the United States suffered an outbreak of swine flu. The entire world had to shield itself from the plague. Millions of pigs, no one knows how many, was sacrificed for coughing or sneezing. Who is guilty of causing these human diseases? Animals, it's that simple. Free of all suspicion are the giants of global agribusiness, these sorcerers' apprentices who turn food into high-potency chemical bombs. Okay. It's not working. Okay. <laughs> so this is from a very reliable source. Evidence has shown that a significant proportion of British Muslims believe that avoiding the consumption of meat for a period of 24 hours or more may result in death or worse. As Muslims, we are obsessed with meat. We're obsessed with the way you kill it, with the way you store it, with the way you cook it, with the way you serve it, with the way you sell it. This obsession has led us to a place where we cannot go without one day, without cannot go more than one day without eating meat. We scour and search the side streets and alleys of London and beyond, looking for that restaurant that serves the halal meat, the certain type that we're looking for, served by a certain type of person, sourced from a certain type of farm, just so that we don't have to go that one day without eating. Because obviously you die from starvation or from vegetarian poisoning. <laughs> but what impact does this demand have on the environment? I'm, I'm shocked every time as well. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Since 1963, global meat consumption has quadrupled from 78 million tons to 308 million tons per year. This isn't in proportion to the global increase um, of population. This increase in demand is because we insist on eating meat every day in the developed world and because in the recently developing world, middle and upper class people are, developed, are acquiring a more affluent lifestyle and so they are also consuming meat close to the rate that we're consuming it. According to the UN, the grains dedicated to feeding animals could theoretically feed 3.5 billion people. <coughs> Currently, there are 842 million people that don't have enough meat to eat in the world. And 45% of deaths of children under five are due to malnutrition. The world's cattle alone consumes a quantity of food equal to the caloric need of 8.7 billion people. This is more than the Earth's entire population, just going to cows, for the consumption of meat. To produce one kilo... Oh, didn't work. There we go. <laughs> to produce one kilo of beef, you need 15,500 litres, 15 litres of water. And to produce one kilo of vegetables, you just need just over 300. And there are 842,000 people in the world who die from unclean water currently. Globally, 1.8 million people do not have access to clean water. And the WHO estimates that by 2025, half of the world's population will be living in water-stressed areas. So where am I going with this? It's very depressing. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's broken. No, sorry. <laughs> I'm really bad at this. <laughs> Where am I going? Um, consuming meat at the rate we're currently consuming it at is damaging to us physically, damaging the environment, and um, damaging us spiritually. It's a massively inefficient way to feed ourselves. If we, if we think about our focus on meat as such a stable part of our diet, and then consider what it takes to produce it, we have the potential and the capacity to rid the world of hunger and to provide clean water to everyone. In a spiritual sense, where meat is such an easily obtainable, everyday, almost indifferent commodity, the sense that it was previously a living, breathing, sentient being is easily lost. 
The demand we have aspired to, where it's commonplace to have meat every day, has necessitated the need for concepts like industrial farming, where animals are reared for a with a range of chemicals and antibiotics that make them perfectly delicious, battery farming, where the maximum number of hens are placed and squeezed into the minimum space to produce the maximum number of eggs without any thought as to what it does to their feet, their bodies, or their minds. Horse meat. I don't think I need to remind anyone what it felt like to have horse meat on our plates. And lastly, playing a recording of Bismillah over an animal's body as it's killed because an individual, living, breathing, human person is not cost-effective enough to provide a spiritually superior meat. The matter of religious legality is besides the point because it's justified whether you think it's right or wrong. These animals are giving us a gift and God has put us in a position of authority where we not only receive this gift, but we must respect it. Making meat halal takes time, effort, care, attention, and love for the animals that give us the meat. They, have, they must have good lives, they must be treated well. And when it comes to their slaughter, they must be calm, they must be taken away from the other animals. And we must stop, we must think, we must say a prayer before we take their lives to provide for our sustenance. Doing this on an assembly line is cutting the definition of what it means to be halal very, very fine. It's the, but it's the only way of catering for our unreasonable, insatiable, and almost ignorant demand for meat currently. It's working now. Okay. <laughs> so, at the risk of sounding really, really depressing and bleak and dark and hopeless, there is still hope because we have fasted for just over two weeks, fasting 20 hours a day without food or water, maintaining some vague definition of functionality in this world where no one believes that we can't not have water. As a community, that's incredible. There are not many people in this world that could do that all together with not that much benefit back to us. So we, have, we are so determined and we have the ability to do whatever we want because no one could thought, think our bodies are capable of doing this. All of this that I've told you is really dire, but all it takes to reverse it is to just halve our meat intake. And if we can fast this long, we can probably do without another burger. <laughs>